guys, it's Izzy here and today we're going to be looking at the books that I would like to read in the month of May. In May I'm focusing on the contemporary and li literary fiction genre so let's see what books I chose this month. Let's get into it. The first one I have is People Person by Candace Cardi Williams. There are several books by this author that I want to read. I've heard great things from some British friends and like British people I follow but not so much from the American crowd. This one is about basically the dad is having a secret life and had two separate families. It says if you could choose your family you wouldn't choose the Penningtons. One father, four mothers, five children. So maybe more than two families because that, that seems like quite a bit there. Dimple Pennington knows of her half siblings Nikisha, Danny, Lizzie, and Prince but she doesn't really know them. There are five people who don't have anything in common except disappointment, faint memories of being driven through Brixton in their dad's gold jeep, and some pretty complex abandonment issues. Besides, Dimple has bigger things to think about. A vibrant and charming celebration of discovering family as an adult. I love books about family and then all those good reviews that I heard. That's something with literary fiction out of the books that I've already read this month that there's so much of character studies in books of that genre and I am somebody who I need good character work. That's my favorite thing about reading. So it seems like I'm gonna have a good reading month. Next I have Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ning. I read Little Fires Everywhere and really enjoyed it. It wasn't a favorite book but I did really enjoy my time reading it and it was another one that was so great to analyze and I will be annotating all these books that's so super fun and exciting. Well, this one is a little bit different. I think there are some like sci-fi elements involved. This is a deeply suspenseful and heart heart trending? I've never heard that word. Novel about the unbreakable love between a mother and child in a society consumed with fear. I don't think that's that, is that talking about Little Fires Everywhere or is that talking about this one? I didn't think this one was about a mother. I thought it was a father and child. But okay. So 12 year old Bird Gardner lives a quiet existence with his, oh okay, it's a son, with his loving but broken father, a former linguist who now shelves books in a university library. Bird knows not to ask too many questions, stand out too much, or stay too far. For a decade their lives have been governed by laws written to preserve American culture. In the wake of years of economic instability and violence to keep the peace and restore prosperity, the authorities are now allowed to relocate children of dissidents, especially those of Asian origins and libraries, have been forced to remove books seen as unpatriotic, including the work of Bird's mother, Margaret, a Chinese-American poet who left the family when he was nine years old. Okay, so a lot of family dynamics, and y'all know I love books where there are children as characters, so that's something I think I'll really enjoy. Missing Hearts is an old story made new of ways supposedly civilized communities can ignore the most searing injustice. It's a story about the power and limitations of art to create change. The lessons and legacies we pass on to our children and how any of us can survive a broken world with our hearts intact. I don't think it's possible to survive with your hearts intact. You can only just grow and yeah. <laughs> and then this one, I was really, when I watched the show Narcos, I, it got me really interested in Colombia. So I wanted to read books set there. And one of those books is In the Beginning Was the Sea by Tomas Gonzalez. Oh my gosh, I've had this on my TBR for so long. This is, they left in search of paradise and found themselves in hell. Based on a true story, the beginning was to see as a menacing, ironic tale of human weakness, the terrifying power of nature, and what happens when our dreams meet their fateful reality. Such great themes. I love nature writing. Like, that's one of my favorite kind of writing styles or atmospheres for the writing. I love things set just out in the wilderness. When our dreams meet their fateful reality. There's so many instances in life where you think you want something and then it happens or on the journey of getting to that something you're like, did I really want this? So yeah, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it if you get that reference. Shout out to you. Then we have Symptomatic by Danzi Zena. This is a New York City one. Literary fiction and New York City go together in my mind. Just so many of the popular literary fiction books seem to take place in New York. I don't know why that is, but that's a city with 8 million people. All 8 million of those people have a different story to tell, so I guess it is fitting that there's so many books taking place there. A young woman moves to New York City for what promises to be a dream job, a prestigious fellowship writing for a respected magazine. 
this place, she feels unsure of her fit in the world. In comes a look of recognition, a gesture of friendship from an older woman named Greta who shares the same difficult to place skin color. On common ground, a tennis alliance, not tennis, but t t tenuous alliance, begins between two women in racial limbo. So too does the older woman's unnerving obsession and a collision of two lives spiraling out of control. A beautifully written novel, at once suspenseful, erotic, and tantalizing, clever, symptomatic as a groundbreaking contri contribution to the literature of racial identity is a little bit different. We do have the one, um, the Celeste Neen book, where Asian people were being like heavily monitored, where this one is also going to dive into racial um, identity. So that's, as somebody who has never had issues with that, I always want to know about different people's experiences and life. I, I saw a great quote about reading fiction. People are like, what can you learn from reading fiction? You learn empathy. And I think that is something that a lot of people in our world do need in their lives. They need to be empathetic. empathetic. And <laughs> I'm sorry for, having a hard time pronouncing a lot of these words today. That's another thing I have found with literary fiction is that there are a lot of pretentious words and I don't know why that is exactly. I know in some, a lot of books, the characters are from a very privileged background, like when the Ivy League schools are from a very rich family, so that may play into it. I'm not sure why such large words are used in literary fiction. I don't know if that's really the case here, so don't think I'm just saying for symptomatic. Next we have a book that I randomly found at Second Story Books in Washington DC. Love that store so much. I could have bought so many books there and I can't wait to go back one day. And this one is A Dangerous Woman by Mary McGarry Morris and I was drawn because it's the penguin like with the orange spine. Uh, yeah they're eye-catching so penguin did a great job when they decided to start doing that with some of their books. So let's see what this one is about. This is really, okay. Martha Horgan is not like other women. She stares, she has violent crushes on people. She can't stop telling the truth. Martha craves love, independence, and companionship, but her relentless honesty makes her painfully vulnerable to those around her. Frances, her wealthy aunt and begrooting guardian, Bertie, who befriends her, then cruelly rejects her, and Colin Mackey, the seductive man who preys on her desires. Confused and bitter, distrusting even those with her best interests at heart, Martha is propelled into a desperate attempt to gain control over her own life. This book is obviously older. Let's see when it was published. 1992. And I feel like now that everything that Martha is described to be is what women want to be like now and what you see a ton in fiction. I don't know if at this time that this book was published, if that was also the case. People want to be that dangerous woman. They want to be daring and violent and honest and craving love, independence, and companionship. I, I think that's probably being a woman at its core is wanting to be all those things and wanting those things in your life. So this one does sound like it will be a great um, book to analyze its own womanhood. Lastly, I have a very popular book and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is about a main character who had an inappropriate relationship with a teacher and at the time she didn't see anything wrong with it. Then we go years into the future and people are starting to come out that they also have relationships with this teacher and that they see that it was not an appropriate relationship, that he was grooming these girls. So this is really with the Me Too movement that is kind of what inspired this book for um, men in higher positions having inappropriate relationships with girls, students, and grooming and all of that. And I've heard this is a very heavy read and that's a very hard read. And luckily for me, those are usually the books that get me, give you that gut punch and get a five star. I don't want to put that on this book. I don't like going in with expectations. It's fun going in with no expectations. So we're just gonna say all those things, put the book aside and I'll let y'all know at the end of the month what I ended up thinking those of. Those are all of the books that I would like to read in the month of May. Have you guys read any of these books? What did you think of them? Or would you like to read any of these books? And do you have any recommendations for me? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way through, leave a flower emoji in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.